In this video, we will review the steps for Intro to Biotech 2 Unit 4. Specifically, we will cover Unit 4B, Parts 1, 2, and 3. Here is a list of the core materials required to complete this exercise. Please refer to your manual for a complete list. Part 1, begin by obtaining four plates, one for each of the three water samples and the fourth plate for a control. Label the plate with your initials, the date, and corresponding sample name. Ensure the label is made on the half of the petri dish containing the auger. Do not label the lid as it could become separated from its auger plate. With your plates ready, set up the vacuum apparatus. Remove the Buckner funnel from the sterile packaging and place it in the flask using the rubber stopper. Do not push down too hard or the stopper may become stuck. Attach the vacuum hose to the flask and the outlet. You may cover the Buckner funnel with a Kim wipe until you are ready to process the first sample. Find the cleanest water source and begin with that one. Take your sterile graduated cylinder to the first water source and rinse at least three times before collecting 100 milliliters. Bring the sample back to your bench. Before filtering the water samples, prepare a negative control by placing a sterile gridded filter paper on the control plate. Remove a gridded filter paper from the packaging. Using sterile forceps, place it directly on the negative control plate, grid side up. Set the plate aside so that you may process the other water samples. Place your forceps in the provided 70% ethanol to keep them sterile between use. Begin processing the first sample. Place a new sterile gridded filter paper in the Buckner funnel. Ensure that when you place the filter in the funnel, it covers all of the filter holes. If any holes are showing, use the forceps to realign it in the center of the funnel. Slowly turn on the vacuum. Do not filter with the vacuum at maximum setting. Filter all 100 milliliters of your sample. Turn off the vacuum. With sterile forceps, retrieve the filter paper from the funnel. When removing the filter paper, slowly lift from one of the edges. This will prevent any tears if there's still a vacuum behind the filter paper. Place the filter paper grid side up on the corresponding petri dish. Obtain your next water sample. Again, be sure to rinse the graduated cylinder three times with the sample before retrieving your 100 milliliters. Use some of the sample water to rinse the Buckner funnel to remove any of the previous sample water. You may quickly open and close the vacuum line to remove any residual water from inside of the Buckner funnel. 
Place a new gridded filter paper in the funnel and filter through the second water sample. Again, transfer the filter paper to the corresponding Petri dish plate, grid side up. Obtain your third water sample, and as before, rinse the funnel with some of the water before placing in a new filter paper. Place a green filter paper in the rinsed funnel. Filter through 100 milliliters of your third water sample. Transfer the filter paper to the corresponding Petri dish. Remove any used glassware and equipment from your bench. Wipe down the area and prepare for part two. Retrieve the rest of your plates, or as many as you will need for part two. You will need at least nine, but use additional plates if you have additional samples or dilutions. As before, label your plate with your initials, date, and sample name. Double check that you have all the plates that you will need to perform this part of the experiment. Prepare labels and place them on your sterile beakers to prevent cross-contamination of your water samples as they are collected for part two. Place the label on the beakers. While processing the first sample, you may store the labeled unused beakers in sterile packaging to prevent contamination. Retrieve your first water sample and prepare your work area. The order in which you process your samples does not matter in part two as it did in part one. Just be sure you process the samples on the correct plate. Volumes of 10, 50, and 100 microliters will be used. You may set up the P10, P200, and P1000 micropipettes at these volumes. Transfer the corresponding volumes of each water sample to the plates. Obtain a sterile loop and evenly spread the sample across the surface of the auger. You may use the same sterile loop for a given water sample, but choose a new one for each new water source to prevent cross-contamination. When finished with the first set of plates, cover them and set them aside to process the remaining plates and water samples. Second beaker. As before, ensure your collection beaker is rinsed three times with the water source before collecting the final amount required. Again, transfer and spread 10, 50, and 100 microliters of the sample to the corresponding plates. We'll repeat the process for the third and final water sample.
Here we can view the process from a different angle. Transfer the corresponding volumes to the center of each of the plates. Using the sterile loop, spread the sample evenly across the plate by simultaneously running the loop from side to side in your right hand while spinning the auger plate with your other hand. It is also helpful to begin at the center of the plate and move outwards as you spread the water sample around. To obtain consistent data, Make sure that the water samples have been spread evenly across the surface of the auger. When all of your sample plates have been processed, place tape or rubber bands around the plates and place them in a 35 degrees Celsius incubator for 48 to 72 hours. Be sure to make a note of the exact temperature of the incubator and the exact time at which the plates began incubation. After the incubation period, retrieve your plates and bring them back to your bench. Take notes of what appears on all of your plates and using a cell counter, count how many colonies are present on each of the plates. It is recommended that you prepare a table in your notebook before coming to a class to assist with this data collection. When you are finished collecting data, put the plates back together and keep them stored until you are ready to perform Part C.